is the season for thunderstorms to be rolling through the area, but luckily Annapolis has missed them tonight. And we've missed you guys. It's been about a month since we've been out here. I'm going to be calling out the boats in third tonight. RDZ, Brian Robinson's J70, and Walter Pletcher's Occam's Razor are in third, but with a good result tonight, they could get back to the top of the podium. I'm Ashley Love from T2B TV. Joining me from behind the camera tonight is Bruce Nairn. Let the fifth race of the second series begin. The first start is the Far 30s and Charles Eng Straight Dog, who basically races every week by themselves. It's a downwind start. A little bit of a pile up for the J35s. Everyone's trying to get their kite up before the start and stay up under the line. And here is Craig and Dottie Saunders' monkey dust. They held their kite till go and pop. Nice set. T-Bone is the last one to start, but they have the clearest air. They have, you got the clearest air, you guys. <laughs> He's gonna roll everybody though, Let, let's, let's, let's see. <laughs> the J-105s have a total pile up. Starboard versus port, kites versus no kites, jibs up. And it's an individual recall with 409 Dove having a nice clean start. Oh, it was Alexander Pendleton's more cowbell. They were over the line. They'll have to catch up. After the last start, you'd think that John Harris's schools out right here at the pin would be a risky move, but everyone's letting him get away with it. He's on starboard. You just pin that guy out. Very nice starting. The top four boats are only separated by two points. Yes, Striking distance. Well, Occam's Razor. You Where are they? Well, Walt Pletcher back uh, when Pluto was a planet and was sailing on Prelude knew what he was <laughs> doing, so I expect him to pull this back out. Everyone who started at the pin is now needing to fight for a lane. 3A1 out in front with the bright Chartreuse kite is one of those boats tied for first, so they're they're proving their colors. Chartreuse? How do you spell that? Uh, it starts with a ch and ends yeah. with a truce. <laughs> well, my buddy Johnny got rolled on that mess. I oh, know. Man. Oh, it's and like, again, oh, he's getting man, rolled that's again. A, that's embarrassing. The 105s have gotten around A, the first mark of their course. There are storm systems passing us to the left and right. Hopefully none will hit us. And Dove is deep. Look at that. The way the race course is set up, it's a bit of a parade. So passing lanes are few. So Bruce, we watched this boat, 365. That's Brotherly, Kyle Comerford. They're winning this oh, fleet. Right. We've watched them start at the boat. Well, that was obvious. I and they just crushed around that first mark. No wonder they get the best angle. And the shortest distance. 382 is Brian Robinson, RDZ. He could overtake Ooh. he could overtake T Dan Snake on this one if he holds position. And how many points does he need? Only one. Uh -oh. And Occam's Razor is going to be coming in third. That's a pile up at the red mark, Ash. Yeah, the rest of the fleet's all packed I up like, right together. I like the way the race committee did this. The Far 30s have gone around G and are headed back home. Rod Javins, Ramrod, leading the way in.
If I'm going to pick on boats in third place, I have to point out MI2, J88, David Malkin. They are within striking distance, too. And they're doing really well. They're leading perf one right now. Yeah, he jumped up from the low side to the high side. I think you saw the camera. Yeah, it's got to look good, yeah. camera's coming. Gotta oh, yeah. Got to get up there. Monkey Dust, one of the boats they have to beat, and usual winner of this class, trying to keep up. Who owes who time? Monkey Dust is 78, MI2 87. So, MI2 is supposed to be slow. Wow. Yeah! Wow. Maggie, in the lead in the J35. Go, Peter Shutt. Mirage leading the 105 class, but only in this race. And then Aunt Jean, a class leader, trading positions on this race course as the rain starts to trickle down. But Maggie. Maggie's got him so Maggie's far. Maggie's on top. Lewis Salveson's Mirage. They had a nice takedown very early, all packed up, buttoned up. You don't need to hold the kite to the very end when you're leading by this much. Doghouse and Chessy have been, ooh. Neck and neck and neck and neck. They've been neck and neck and neck, and that was a close call. Well, actually, Dove didn't do a damn win, so. They could try to claw back on this upwind. They look, they're looking fast on 159 up there, crescendo. Anything can happen. Catherine and Steve Bartleman's Valhalla leading the J30s. They have a shortened course to, uh, cor in comparison to the rest of the class, the rest of the fleet. Second place is in more contention than first right now. Pogo, Ragdoll, Mary Lou. In the back of the J30 fleets, there's some, uh, some garments, some garments hanging on the boats. But I guess if you take your kite down early, you don't have to worry about it later. Oh, they surely do. The mark is about four boat lengths to the right of your view right now. Uh, upwind boat throwing a wrench into the works there a little bit. <laughs> well, they want to mix it up with somebody. If it's not their own fleet, then they got to mess with somebody else. Perf 3A and the Alberg 30s making their way out to the middle of the course. Way out that little dot that you see is Timothy Bluefield's white cap dominating this race. Little blue dot with white caps. <laughs> they are surrounding us, but we've been so lucky that we're just sort of in the eye of it, I guess, because <laughs> we've been so lucky. The sun's starting to set behind us. It's beautiful. The Etchells are going around their last mark before they head in, and playmaker Alan Kelly is leading this class. There was a lot more port than we thought there was gonna be on that last leg. All these boats are rounding right together. Ashley? Yes? There's one thing I used to get in my craw of sailing is when you start running around a boat setting up spinnaker gear when you're not really, you don't need it risky and oh man he almost I mean, got rolled for the past 15 minutes these boats have looked exactly like this but i mean you got to get your kite ready somehow i guess the last takedown was on yeah. starboard <gasps> running around about the boat watch him pull forward oh, oh you called it there he goes look at that early set by salsadon i How guess can you do that i you guess got it's a boat just to lured with no kite up let's make ourselves a bigger win what? Uh, that's, 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 when like, trap, uh, go up. Who's, <gasps> who's below him? 
Solcedon. Oh, and 1097 down there is coming into contention. Ed holds Eduardo Especial. It looks like uh, <laughs> the minnow and the sharks. 1260 getting swallowed. Yeah, this game for two, oh, like chess, has turned into more of a game of for four. There's room for four at this table now. I would have never let a kite roll over me when I had my gym up. But oh. life is life is. They tough. just gave up two boats and oh, they're about to give up a third. You know, not ready for this set. Oh well. <laughs> and hey. then when the kite goes yeah. up, it's in knots. They won't be happy with this video, but. It's happened to all of us. Eduardo Especial, Ed Holt, came from Leward while everyone was messing about to windward of them for the win. Well, Bruce, tonight could not have been any better for the cameras in the video and the spectators out here. That dark sky, bright sun. So glad to have gotten out here for a great Wednesday night. Fifth race of the second series wrapped up. For the Annapolis Yacht Club, for the Boatyard Bar and Grill, and Bruce Nairn behind the camera, our producer, I'm Ashley Love from T2B TV.